Well, Sunday Times Royal Editor Roy Nikar joins me now, along with uh, Kaindi Andrews, Professor of Black Studies at Birmingham City University. Welcome to both of you. So, Roy, uh, you've been around this royal block a long time. Um, it seems to me that what's been happening is with these royal tours, which used to be not that controversial, normally pretty celebratory, they've become now almost every single time controversial, and it all goes back to colonialism, to the British Empire, how much the royal family on behalf of this country should be apologising for the sins of our past. You've been on a lot of these tours. Are you feeling a rising tide of controversy about that? Um, I have to say, in all honesty, no. And I think it depends where you go. I mean, I, I was in Belize with the Cambridges. I went to Barbados with the Prince of Wales for the handover. And actually, he made a really interesting speech during that tour. He talked about acknowledging that slavery was abhorrent, but he didn't apologise. William did the same in um, the Caribbean, but he didn't apologise. Mm. He, he, he talked about... They acknowledged our past. I think it's right to do that. And I think we've got to recognise... It sounds apologetic it, to me. It does, but it's I not... I mean, I may not actually say the words, I'm sorry, but there's a lot of regret, a lot of... We've got to look back on the past, a lot of revisionism back to a previous era, history. And I, I just wonder uh, where that stops, because isn't it going to affect every tour they do? I don't think so. And I think it's a recognition by members of the royal family and the palace and the government on whose, whose behalf they're travelling on lots of these tours that we are in different times. We didn't have tours for the best part of two years. We are in different times. Black Lives Matter has happened. Other movements have happened. And I think the royal family feel it's their, it's, you know, it's their role to sort of stay relevant, to acknowledge when things have gone wrong. And I thought that statement by William after the Caribbean tour was fascinating. Mm. He acknowledged that things had gone wrong and said the whole point of tours is to go and hear and listen and reflect. Um, I, I don't think it's the role of the royal family to go around the world apologising. Mm. And they've stopped short of that. And I think there's a reason for that. Interesting distinction. So let's bring in Kandy Andrews. I know you're not the world's biggest fan of the monarchy. In fact, you might well be one of the least <laughs> biggest fans of the monarchy. Um, but putting that aside, Kendi, this issue of whether the royal family, on behalf of Britain, should be going around expressing themselves in the way that they are about the colonial past, about the empire and so on, my question for you really is, does it really make any difference? Why is everyone clamouring for the royals to do this? Does it really matter if the royal family keeps saying... We've got to think about what happened before. We've got to reflect and so on. Well, I think it's a bad time is what I would say. It's the 21st century and the Queen is the head of state of 15 countries, including my families from Jamaica. And it's frankly been ridiculous since independence and it's ridiculous now, which is why these topics are coming up. I mean, I do agree with you on this one, though. I mean, an apology is meaningless. I mean, apology is pointless. This is about reparations. This is about repenting. And really, there's nothing the royal family could do, and the Queen in particular, to, uh, to apologise other than really resign, get rid of them, go gone and give, give all their money back to the people they stole it from in the colonies. I mean, look, in a way, it's the same debate that people have been having in America and Britain about statues, for example, uh, of people who perhaps were controversial public figures who had good sides and bad sides. From Churchill, we saw... Uh, no, the the statues it. of Churchill, Mandela and Gandhi boarded up at Parliament Square. We've just seen Margaret Thatcher's has been egged within hours of being put up. You're seeing the same thing happening in America. My point about that and about the British Empire and all of these things is that there is good and bad in all these things. Why are we no, there's, so there's preoccupied... Let me ask the question. Why are we so preoccupied no. with looking back to times in history and focusing almost exclusively now on the negative? Because A, it's not just history, So if you, and B, the history is so negative, it shapes the present. So when you have a tour of the royal family, and bear in mind the Royal African Company was the company that enslaved more Africans than any other company in the entire world, that got rich off slavery, that got rich off colonialism, the Queen still wears jewels from India when she goes around to these places, etc. And they're wealthy because of that oppression. And then you go to somewhere like Jamaica and the Caribbean, which is poor, we're only there because of slavery, because of that oppression. That's not something that happened historically. That's something we're dealing with today, which is why people are obviously... Does, does Britain get any credit for... This is not something in the past. Right, but does Britain get any credit for uh, helping to abolish international slave trade? Do you give them any credit for that, the country? 
No, when you are the when you are the con- the country that enslaved more people than anybody else, you don't get any credit whatsoever for finally deciding to stop that practice. Really? No, there's no credit deserved, and, it, and it's and it's far 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 to suggest. So no society, no society can get evolve credit for stopping slavery. Right, but the, see, I, that's where I don't agree with you. I think they should get. I think everyone, countries, people should always get credit for acknowledging things are wrong and changing them. Otherwise, how do you ever evolve as a society?